Who am I? It's the age-old question that everybody asks at some point in their lives. Why is it that we find so much conflict within our own identity uh, for who we are and who we want to be? The reality is that while many of us may give lip service to a certain identity or a role that we want to play in this life, most of us haven't internalized it or become self-aware enough to recognize if it's true or not. Some of us just buy into the lies of who other people say that we are. As we just talked about in this week's lesson, the question we're really asking when we're asking who am I is, am I enough? I think the reason for that is because we find ourselves in this performance-based society. Uh, think about your life, whether it's at home with your parents, or uh, on the field with your coach, or your teammates, or in the musical, or in the band room, wherever it is. Maybe you, you work already and you, you make some money. Wherever you are, your value seems to be tied to what you're capable of, if you are enough. Maybe you question that at home because you're always getting in trouble for not having the best grades or, or trying as hard in school or uh, doing all your chores. And so at home, maybe you just feel like, I'm not enough. My parents only like me when I'm doing what they say. Or maybe it's with football or, or whatever sport that you play. And you know, the position you are in the team is, is directly related to how well you play, if you are enough. The same can be said in any area of our lives. It seems like no matter where we're at, the judgment on us is based on our performance. We live in a very performance-based society. So when we ask, who am I? Oh, well, I'm the, I'm the football guy, or, or I'm the band girl, or I'm the musical person. We tend to, to place our identity in whatever it is that we're good at, or what we like to do, or be around. Our identity seems very performance-based, if we're honest about it. And maybe even here at church, you get the sentiment that if you just smile, say the right things in group discussions, listen through and, and just don't be too interruptive, then man, maybe you're good enough for church even. But that all is a lie. Who you are and your worth and, and who you are at your core, it's not based on your performance. The reality is that many of us have different voices, different areas in our life that, that speak into our lives. And, and so our identity is spread around a, a lot of different things. And all those things are trying to tell you who you are or who, who you're supposed to be. But think of it like a solar system, right? Every planet has its own gravitational pull. The Earth has its gravitational pull. Every, every other planet does as well. And the laws of that planet are set in motion for that planet permanently. And, and anything on that planet has to abide by that gravitational pull. On Earth, it's a certain uh, amount of gravitational pull. I'm not a scientist, so I don't know the numbers off the top of my head. But like, if you go on the moon, the gravitational pull isn't as strong. So that's why it looks like people are moving in slow motion when you see video of people on the moon. And it's different for every planet in our solar system. But ultimately, every single planet in the solar system is subject to the gravitational pull of the main star or the sun around which it's rotating. In other words, while there might be their own gravitational pull on each planet, that pull in itself is obedient to the pull of the sun. So many of us, when we try to come up with our core identity or who we are, who we're supposed to be, everything else starts to re revolve and rotate around that. And, and so if, if your identity is performance-based and, and maybe soccer is the biggest thing for you, then that will be your son. And depending on how you perform around that subject seems to determine what you're worth and determine your identity. But I'm here to tell you today that who you are is not performance-based. And the big mistake most of us make when it comes to this question of who am I is we are trying to put our value and worth in things that ultimately don't define us. The real question is what ultimate identity core is the sun in your life that everything else has to revolve around. And I'm here to tell you today that if it's Jesus, then he's already defined who you are through his son. Through his death on that cross and his blood that was shed, you're able to look at him and, and claim him as your savior. And you know what? He gives you a new identity. You are new and who you are is not based on whether or not you're enough. 
because the reality is on your own, you can never be enough. There will always, always be somebody better in your sport. There will always be somebody better in, in whatever area that you're involved in. But with God, there is no enough. You meet the standards by accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And then the crazy thing about that is, and I've experienced this in my own life, if you talk to your small group leaders, they can vouch for the same thing. When we surrender all the other areas of our life that are trying to tell you who you are and stake a claim on your identity, then all of a sudden, all that really matters is what God says. So when you don't measure up in sports, when you don't measure up in the play, when you don't measure up in school, guess what? You still measure up in God's eyes. Your identity hasn't changed. You might find other places to spend your time with. You, you might redirect yourself towards other things. And sometimes that's God himself pulling you around a new source of gravity. And that's okay. But who you are and whether or not you are enough will never be in question. Because you are a child of the King. And nothing else can tell you who you are. And to him, you will always be enough.